Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Bonnie Dixon. I'm a Senior Public Information Officer here at Yuba Water Agency. Thank you so much for joining us today for our Lunch and Learn, preparing for the next big flood, past, present, and future investments in flood risk reduction. Give it a few, few more minutes to let folks trickle in. Uh, you can join us on Zoom or on Facebook. And there is a slight delay if you're watching on Facebook. Uh, as we let folks join, I'm gonna go ahead and launch a quick poll. So hopefully everyone can see it. The question is, when thinking of flood risk, what is your greatest concern? Give it about 30 seconds. Just a few more seconds for those who are just joining us. We've got a poll up. What is your greatest concern when thinking about flood risk? Okay. So it looks like a big, big concern is definitely levee safety. That was our uh, highest, followed by dam safety. And a few folks who are concerned about economic impacts of flooding flash floods, a few mudslides, and then a few folks who weren't sure. So thank you so much for sharing that. We'll definitely address some of those during this presentation and um, we'll take some of the additional responses for future fodder, so thank you. Okay, so diving right in. Just a few housekeeping items. Again, you can watch on Zoom or Facebook. You can use the Q&A feature on Zoom to submit your questions and we'll go ahead and answer questions at the end. A recording will be available within 48 hours, and you can head over to our website, yubawater.org, to sign up for future updates. Uh, you can do that in the pop-up subscribe box, or you can go to About Us and stay informed. So a quick uh, note about Yuba Water Agency. We are a standalone public agency, and our mission areas include flood risk reduction, sustainable water supply, hydropower generation, fisheries protection and enhancement, and recreation at the beautiful New Bullard's Bar Reservoir. So today we'll be talking about flood safety, uh, Yuba County's flood risk and flood history, and the creation of Yuba Water Agency, as well as an overview of our flood risk reduction mission area, the history and construction of New Bullard's Bar Dam, dam safety and levee improvements, coordinated reservoir operations, and managing our watershed for changing conditions, and future investments in public safety that are uh, in, in the planning stage. So with that, uh, I'll go ahead and introduce today's speakers. We have Ryan McNally, he's our Water Resources Project Manager, Tim Trong, our C Chief Dam Safety Engineer, and John James, our Manager of Resource Planning. So with that, I will go ahead and pass it off to you, Ryan, to get us started. Thank you, Bonnie. Um, my notes up real quick. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us during your lunch hour. My name is Ryan McNally, and I'm a Water Operations Project Manager for the Yuba Water Agency. And one of my primary roles here is to ensure we remain invested in and strengthen our position in programmatic flood protection to benefit everyone in Yuba County. And as we dive into our presentation, I want to first chat a little bit about flood risk in Yuba County and how the Yuba County Water Agency came to be. And on the photo you see in front of you right now is an aerial picture taken of the city of Marysville in 1955. And I think it's especially impactful because it illustrates how vulnerable our community is to flooding. Slide please. So I think everyone here knows that we're surrounded by three major rivers, the Yuba, the Feather and the Bear Rivers. And in a lot of respects, our region is defined by these rivers and it can be easy to forget about how productive and flashy they can be, especially when we're trying to emerge from one of the driest years on record. From a hydrologic perspective, the Yuba County is very fortunate to have such a remarkable water, remarkably water, reliable water supply, but however, that reliability can and often comes at a cost. 
Between the years of 1805 and 1997, there have been more than 30 major flood events in the Sacramento Valley, and most of them have had an adverse effect to Yuba County. Slide, please. In addition to hydrology, one of the factors that also contributes to the flood risk here in Yuba County include its levees and its historic gold mining legacy. Our region has an extensive history of hydraulic gold mining in the nearby Sierra Nevada foothills. And this mining literally washed away entire mountainsides and led to large quantities of silt being deposited in the rivers, which raised the riverbeds. And in some places, the riverbeds were raised higher than the cities themselves, and that includes the city of Marysville. And to combat the floods resulting from the reduced river channels, rudimentary levees were built by early settlers. <clears throat> and this ended up exacerbating flooding even more as silt continued to build up in the rivers were further manipulated by the construction of more protective infrastructure, which included debris dams and bypasses. Slide, please. So Yuba County's flood history has been documented since record be keeping began in the late, in the late 1800s. However, the catalyst for the Yuba County Water Agency and the Yuba River Development Project, which was responsible for constructing the New Bullards Bar Dam just above Dobbins on the North Fork of the Yuba River, was flooding that began on Christmas Eve 1955, caused by what we refer to today as an atmospheric river and a weather phenomenon we'll talk about in just a little bit. And although the new Bullards Bar project was not without controversy in the years leading up to it, the 1955 flood that threatened the city of Marysville and much of Yuba County caused tremendous damage and loss of life in neighboring Yuba City and Sutter County was a sobering reminder that motivated the people of Yuba County to take flood control into our own hands. It literally took hell or high water to muster the resolve to construct this enormous and unprecedented local project on the Yuba River, which paved the road to the projects we see on the ground today. And although this was well before my time, every Christmas my grandmother recalls the story of when her family was evacuated from their home on Diver Street in East Marysville to the upper floors of the downtown Hotel Marysville. She was only a freshman in high school at the time, but vividly remembers watching from their hotel window as an army of volunteers gathered to save Marysville knowing that her dad, who was my great-grandfather, was one of the men filling and sacking sandbags on the D Street Bridge, which was ultimately destroyed by the Yuba River later in that flood. And what seems like a lifetime ago to some, those rivers still haunt many who live through the catastrophe of not knowing if they were going to make it or not. Slide, please. <clears throat> And we, you know, we've had a number of catastrophic floods since 1955. Some of you here certainly remember the more recent 1986 and 1997 floods. And in response to the 86 flood that destroyed much of Linda, in 1990, Yuba Water requested Congress and the US Army Corps of Engineers to act and urge them to bring 200 year levels of flood protection to Yuba County. The devastating flood of 1986 was the catalyst for the $500 million Yuba River Basin Project where the Corps of Engineers, DWR, and the Central Valley Flood Protection Board endeavored to repair and construct more levees to mitigate this risk. The Yuba River Basin Project was further recognized and strengthened following the 1997 flood, which inundated much of South Yuba County, including present day Plumas Lake. And so now that I've provided a little bit of context in the background of Yuba County's flood history, I'm gonna pass it over to our Chief Dam Safety Engine Engineer, Tim Trung, for more on the construction of New Bullards Bar Dam and how it really is at the heart of our flood risk reduction efforts. Tim? All right. Thanks, Ryan. Um, so as he mentioned earlier, the, the whole, our whole region was really impacted by, by floods. Um, and uh, there was, uh, 50 years ago, there were several actions that were taken to help reduce the, uh, that flood. Uh, on the American River, you have the federal agencies building Folsom Dam. On the uh, Feather River, uh, you, know, you have the state building um, Orville Dam. But nothing was really done regarding Yuba River. Um, so the communities of Yuba County were still really impacted and it, the need was really there to do something about the flood risk in Yuba County. So it took upon themselves to, uh, to vote and approve an initiative to build Yuba River, Yuba New Bulls Bar Dam and Yuba River Development Project. Uh, and the cost of this was more than three times the entire assessed value of the entire county which is amazing when you think about it. So the, uh, let's see if I can move this slide. Yep, 
Hey, Bonnie, the slide's not moving. Would you mind? Um, thank you. So the, the, I got the uh, uh, proposition approved and went move forward with constructing the new Bulls Bar Dam uh, to help reduce the flood risk in Yuba County. This is a monumental achievement uh, for the county. Uh, the dam when it was built was 645 feet tall. It still is. <laughs> uh, but it was the fourth highest dam in the country at the time. And now it's the fifth highest dam in the country. Uh, the dam itself holds uh, almost a million acre feet of water in, in the reservoir. And an acre feet is, as it sounds, is an acre of water, an acre of area a foot deep. Over the winter, we reserve about 170,000 acre feet of that, or about a little over 17% of the reservoir capacity uh, for, flood, for flood risk reduction. So we don't use that. 17% of the reservoir to help us uh, help reduce the flood risk in Yuba County. And uh, the dam also provides uh, water supply for the various uh, irrigation districts uh, around the county as well. Can you uh, move next? So I mentioned that uh, the dam itself is part of the Yuba River Development Project because during this time, we not only built new Bulls Bar Dam, we built a variety of other uh, facilities that are part of what we call the uh, Yuba River Development Project. And it, all these facilities uh, together comprise of our entire you know, system to help reduce uh, flood risk and to generate hydroelectric power. Um, so up on the uh, middle, up on the middle, uh, up on the middle river, sorry, up on the middle Yuba, um, we have Our House Dam. Um, it's similar to New Bulls Bar in that it's also a double curvature concrete uh, arch dam. Um, the main purpose of uh, Our House Dam is to divert water through the Loman Ridge Tunnel into Oregon Creek, um, where it's captured by another one of our diversion dam uh, called Log Cabin. Similar to Our House, the Log Cabin Dam is uh, again, uh, as a diversion dam whose main purpose is to divert water from there through the Camptonville Tunnel into New Bullsbar Reservoir. And you can see from the uh, top image there, you can see the diversion tunnel right there, just upstream of the dam. And it's similar to our house, the diversion tunnel is right around there on the uh, left side of the picture. Uh, so we all have, so you all, you all know about New Bullsbar Dam, uh, 645 feet tall. Uh, the water is captured there and transported through uh, some penstock and almost four and a half miles of tunnel down to New Colgate Powerhouse, um, where two very large fountain uh, turbine sets would generate roughly 170 megawatts of power each. And then also downstream uh, at Englebright Dam, uh, we have Narrows 2 Powerhouse. Um, so these facilities were all constructed at the same time as the uh, Yuba River Development Project. And they comprise the entire system of the agency. Um, along with uh, you know, flood risk reduction, the powerhouse also helps generate revenue for the agency as well. And that revenue uh, is invested back in, in the Yuba County communities. So, New Boys Bar Dam today, um, we are regulated by two agencies. One is the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, uh, and the other is by the state, the uh, California uh, Department of Water Resources Division of Safety of Dams. So between those two agencies, uh, you know, there are a lot of various uh, periodic uh, regulatory requirements that we have to meet. Uh, one of those items is a five-year uh, inspection uh, by a third party consultant, which we call the independent consultant. So this is basically where we go out and hire a, a contractor and they come in and inspect our, all of our dams and all of our powerhouses to ensure that uh, the dams are safe and that we are operating in accordance with all of our requirements. And it's a very massive uh, undertaking. And it's usually the process itself starts almost a year in advance uh, to complete this process and it's done every five years. So uh, currently, you know, Yuba Water, we meet all the dam regulatory uh, requirements, meet or exceed all dam 
regulatory requirements. Too far. Hey, Bonnie, can you, uh, good, thank you. <laughs> okay, so there's a, we use a lot of variety of instruments to monitor dam safety. Um, in the picture on the, on the bottom here, you, know, you see storm motion accelerometers where we monitor earthquake. And of course, the good old fashioned uh, staff gauge to measure seepage uh, in the dam. Uh, one of the things that I'm working to, uh, on right now is really trying to modernize uh, our monitoring equipment. Uh, some of our instrumentations were, that we used to monitor the dam were, are the same as what they were uh, when they were installed them 50 years ago. So dam safety has evolved uh, a lot and technology has also evolved a lot in the past 50 years. So as you can see, one of the things that uh, we're working on uh, incorporating to, into our dam safety monitoring program is the UAVs to help us monitor the look at the areas where it's uh, not quite as accessible. Um, so one of the products we can get out of UAVs uh, is this uh, 3D photogrammetric model that helps us look at these sites that uh, would really be impossible without the use of modern technology just because of this sheer size and uh, complex structure of, of the Bois Bar Dam. We also conduct uh, periodic and maintenance as well. So on the right side in the picture you can see uh, we recently had to resurface some of the, the targets to monitor the movement of the dam. And some of these things are very uh, um, tremendous undertaking because again, because of the sheer size of the dam, it's very difficult to access some of these areas where we'll have, when we do need to access them, we'll need specialized equipment like a trained rope crew to repel down the face of the dam uh, to reach these places. Um, on a side note, you know, all these monitoring uh, instrumentations uh, are really a, a personal note to me uh, because I live uh, in Yuba County and my house is in the inundation zone should the dam fail. So I am personally invested uh, in ensuring that you know, the dam is uh, meeting all the regulatory requirements or exceeding them, and that the dam is safe so that my family doesn't get uh, evacuated uh, in case of a of failure. And uh, I think with that, I'll turn it back to Ryan. Yeah, thanks, Tim. Uh, yeah, quite a lot going on up there at New Bullard Far. It's uh, quite an operation. Thank you. So Yuba County is and always will be threatened by three very unpredictable rivers. However, our community is fortunate to allow or to follow the footsteps of very forward thinking leaders who carried the torch to protect our county. The Yuba County Water Agency has always found value in developing partnerships and working with others to systematically improve safety in the face of these threats with real and tangible projects. Slide, please. So all told, along with local, state, and federal partners, um, there's been more than a $600 million investment to reduce flood risk in Yuba County, and it's paid off. Today, we're among the best protected areas in the state. And Yuba Water also continues to pay approximately about you know, five and a half million dollars annually in bond debt to cover both the agency and Yuba County's local cost share for much of the completed levy work, including the Feather River and Bear River setback levies, and will continue to do so in through 2038. Slide, please. So since formation in 1959, Yuba Water has led the local effort with state and federal agencies and Congress to, to, well, and many others to increase public safety by reducing flood risk for the people of Yuba County. And as we move forward and streamline our flood, flood risk reduction program, we've embraced three initiatives that encompass the projects that Yuba Waters currently and continues to invest in toward our target of 100 and 200 year levels of flood protection. Now I'm gonna stop there for a second because when we're talking about flood protection, you often hear the terms 100 or 200 year levels of, of flood protection. Well, that can be confusing. And so I'm gonna to try to explain what that really means and um, distill it down a little bit. And so what that really represents is the percentage of likelihood that flooding will occur in any given year consistent with the probability of its value. And for an example, a 100 year level flood event is so large and so rare 
that we could reasonably expect it to occur once per every 100 years, or in other words, a 1% chance in any given year. Same thing carries forward to the 200 year event. They're much larger in magnitude and much more infrequently, or uh, infrequent, sorry, and could reasonably be expected to occur once every 200 years. So that's one half of 1% chance of occurring any given year. And so these are just values given to illustrate the magnitude of flood events. Um, federal and state agencies use these numbers to determine how safe an area is, what kinds of structures can be built there, and the cost of insurance premiums. So in reality, though, this is a way to identify the size of such events and not the frequency of occurrence. And when we stop and think about that, such events could theoretically occur multiple years back to back, which can be misleading. But to achieve these goals, Yuba Water's mission is to help our partners to coordinate and unify smaller improvement projects for increased efficiency and to develop a long-term plan to complete construction and repairs necessary to achieve reduced flood risk. So getting back to these three goals, they are achieving a 200 year level of protection for urban areas, which include the cities of Marysville, Wheatland, Linda, Olivers, and Plumas Lake, and a 100 year level of protection for agricultural areas. Also to coordinate and unify smaller improvement projects for increased efficiency. And you know, finally, our goal is to develop a long-term plan to complete construction and repairs necessary to achieve reduced flood risk. And as you can see, um, from everything we're talking about this afternoon, Yuba County has been and continues forward as a leader in helping to develop flood protection infrastructure. Slide, please. So when it comes to levees, a lot of people might not realize that Yuba Water doesn't actually own or operate any levees. In reality, and although the agency construct constructed, owns, and operates the New Bullards Bar Dam, which is the critical infrastructure resulting from the 1955 flood, the levees protecting our county are owned and operated by various local jurisdictions and reclamation districts. Slide, please. Two of the largest flood risk reduction projects completed in recent years are the Bear and Feather River setback levees that protects much of South Yuba County, including Plumas Lake. So the Bear River setback levee is a two mile long levee protecting South Yuba County with 200 year level of flood protection. It also includes a 339 acre expanded floodway, a 639 acre ecological preserve, and it actually lowers 200 year flood stage upstream by one foot. Similarly, the Feather River setback levee is a 5.7 mile long levee protecting South Yuba County, offers a 200 year level of flood protection, has a 1,500 acre expanded floodway, and lowers 200 year flood stage upstream by three feet. This is, actually, this is actually a physical lowering of the river upstream. Slide, please. Work also continues on the Marysville Ring Levee, which you can see progress on right now if you drive out of Marysville heading east on Highway 20. The slide right on the screen right now illustrates the project in its various phases, and the gray portions are those that have already been completed, and the green is what is currently underway. The light blue segments represent the next phases and work on phase 2B is expected to begin sometime next year. And the orange segments are currently in the design phase. It's important to note that this levee protects more than 12,000 people and when complete, will give the city 200 year level of flood protection to help ensure permitting for new businesses, residential development and lower cost flood insurance. Slide please. And then we have the Three Rivers Levy Improvement Authority, who has recently completed the, the new Goldfields, or I'm sorry, Yuba Goldfields Levy, which has achieved the 200-year level of flood protection for much of South Yuba County. This was really the final piece in uh, flood protection for South Yuba County to provide that 200-year protection, and it complements the Feather River and Bear River setback levies. And this is out Hamilton, Hamilton Smartsville Road on your way to Beale Air Force Base. Slide, please. So moving to the north side of the Yuba River, we also have the Hallwood Side Channel Project. And this project will remove 3.2 million cubic yards of sediment from the lower Yuba River and will lower water surface elevations and velocities during high water events to reduce stress on the levees. Additionally, this project will enhance one, 157 acres of natural habitat to restore historical floodplain processes, making it a win-win. So that's really what makes it a, you know, a flood risk reduction project but it's also interconnected with the nearby Trilla North Training Wall Project, which is partially funded by Yuba Water, 
that is focused on reducing flood risk to the communities of Hallwood, Marysville, and District 10. Slide, please. So right now, we have two ongoing flood risk reduction programs, 13 flood risk reduction projects that are complete or in construction, three studies that are well underway, and four projects that are in the planning or design phase. And some of these projects that I, we don't have listed on the screen right now, but just to give you a rundown of a few of them, we have the Bear River Corridor Management Plan, the District 10 Tow Access Corridor Project, um, improvements to the Grasshopper Slough Levee near Wheatland, an additional Bear River Setback Levee, uh, Phase 2 of the North Training Wall, which I just talked about with the Hallwood Project, a Comprehensive Flood Risk Management Plan, and a Real-Time Inundation Mapping Project for Yuba County, and that's in conjunction with Yuba County OES and the Sheriff's Department. And these are all projects that are real and tangible efforts to further reduce the risk of flooding. They also represent $25 million the agency has leveraged to raise an additional $500 million in state and federal funding. However, for some of the projects that will have the biggest impact toward protecting Yuba County, uh, I need to pass this presentation over to my colleague, John James, for the, for the fun stuff. Thanks, Ryan. Um, my name is John James. I'm the resource planning manager for Yuba Water Agency. And among other responsibilities, I manage many of the agency's operational flood risk reduction projects and programs, including some of the ones we'll be looking at today. Next slide, please. So for background, I first wanted to talk about one of our current operational flood risk reduction partnership programs, the Forecast Coordinated Operations Program, or FCO. Lake Oroville and New Bullard's Bar Reservoir operating coordination to improve flood per flood protection along the Yuba and Feather systems. Following the 1997 floods, studies were conducted and recommended improvements to coordination of these operations. And this led to the creation of the FCO program. And since 2005, FCO has been highly successful, a highly successful partnership in achieving its objectives of enhancing communications and reporting for downstream flood emergency needs, providing a common decision support system, and operating the reservoirs in a coordinated fashion to reduce flood risk. This strong partnership between local, state, and federal agencies, including Yuba Water, DWR, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, and the National Weather Service, <clears throat> makes the program highly collaborative and has been key to its success. Next slide, please. So in 2019, in order to continue and enhance the strong partnerships and flood risk reduction efforts the FCO program created, DWR and Yuba Water invested initial $2 million in a new initiative called the Yuba Feather Forecast Informed Reservoir Operations, or FIRO. What is FIRO? FIRO is broadly defined as a flexible water management approach that uses data for monitoring and improved forecasting to help water managers selectively retain or release water from reservoirs. It supports decisions about how much water to keep during dry periods or how much to release prior to storms. FIRO is really a research and operations program that has two main components. One, to improve operational forecasts, and two, to integrate the improved forecast into reservoir operational rules for benefits. It's worth mentioning that the US Army Corps is currently updating the water control manuals, the source of the reservoir operating rules for New Boards Bar and Lake Goroville in parallel with our Yuba Feather Fural program with the intent to include these new adaptive operations. The project is the third Fural project within California and the first to utilize Fural in a combined reservoir operating environment. Agencies like Sonoma Water and Orange County Water District also have current FIRO projects. The focus of the Yuba Feather FIRO program is primarily on flood risk reduction with the potential from water supply benefits as well. This program established a new partnership with Scripps Institute of Oceanography Center for Western Weather and Water Extremes, or CW3E. CW3E specializes in state-of-the-art research into atmospheric rivers, the main type of storm that causes large flood events in our region. Next slide, please. A primary factor that contributes to Yuba County's flood risk is the fact that California has had a highly variable climate marked by periods of drought and extreme rain and flooding due to atmospheric rivers. What do atmospheric rivers, uh, how do atmospheric rivers relate to Fero? Here's a brief video from Scripps that explains a little bit more. Imagine a river in the sky with more than twice the water of the Amazon. It's called an atmospheric river. 
Atmospheric rivers are long, narrow bands of concentrated water vapor that produce major amounts of rainfall. Atmospheric rivers begin in the warm waters of the Pacific, where water evaporates into the air. When this humid air meets a Pacific storm, the water vapor is concentrated and driven toward the coast, becoming a fire hose of rainfall and wind. Once the atmospheric river reaches the coastal mountains and the inland Sierra, the collision squeezes additional rain and snow from the system. Atmospheric rivers are responsible for up to half of California's annual precipitation. Scientists at Scripps Institution of Oceanography have developed a new system that rates atmospheric rivers on a scale from 1 to 5. The rating system helps identify atmospheric rivers that are beneficial, such as those that replenish reservoirs and ones that produce hazards like flooding. Understanding atmospheric rivers is key to improving weather forecasts for better managing water resources and predicting flood risk. Right. So it turns out in California and specifically in our region, being able to accurately predict atmospheric, atmospheric rivers is the key to successfully implementing Furo. Working closely with our partners at Scripps, we are focused on improving atmospheric river forecasts in a number of ways specific to our area. And these include new permanently installed weather monitoring stations in the watershed, weather balloon launches during the events themselves, and also flights over the Pacific Ocean using sensors called drop sonds to measure the atmospheric rivers during their development. The observations are being fed into real-time computer weather forecast models and are already improving forecasts. Additional research under the program includes soil moisture conditions, watershed freezing levels, and rain on snow events. And all these items focus on better understanding how many complicated variables impact runoff into reservoirs and how to better forecast them. Next slide, please. So improved atmospheric river forecasts and enhanced operations rules are important process and technology upgrades. However, to achieve the full benefit of these strategies, it requires the ability to release water ahead of large storm events. Eva Water Agency is planning a new spillway named the Atmospheric River Control Spillway or ARC Spillway. And the following animation provides more details on how the spillway would potentially operate in the future. In one of its most significant public safety efforts since building New Bullard's Bar Dam and Reservoir, Yuba Water Agency is designing a new second spillway. By improving the dam's operational flexibility, the new spillway will significantly reduce flood risk, enhance dam safety, and strengthen the region's resilience to climate change. Bullard's Bar has only one spillway currently, situated high in the dam. Because of that, when there is significant rainfall, we have to wait until the storm is upon us and much of the reservoir is filled before we can release large amounts of water. But by then, the river channel below is also filling because of the storm. Another challenge is that currently the maximum water level for the reservoir is set by an inflexible calendar-based approach. During storm season, we are required to keep the water level in the lake lower so that there is plenty of room to store potential runoff. That's the case regardless of how much rain falls, which often forces us to release water at the beginning of winter, even though the rest of the year may end up being dry. But a new second spillway with gates 31.5 feet lower in elevation and the implementation of forecast-informed reservoir operations will enable us to use the forecast to determine how much runoff water we expect to flow into the reservoir in the days ahead and then release water in advance of the oncoming storm while the river channel below can handle the flows. And then use the space in the reservoir to hold back flows when the storm is strongest, reducing flood risk for the entire region. Additionally, during some dry water years, if no storms are forecast, we can potentially hold on to water that we normally would have had to release, which could be especially valuable when water availability is scarce. Find out more about this important public safety project at yubawater.org. The York Spillway has the potential to reduce downstream water levels by two to three feet during large storm events, increasing the level of protection between one and 300 years. 
In some downstream areas, this nearly doubles the level of protection, again, significantly reducing the flood risk. Next slide, please. So why are lower water levels important related to flood protection? These stage reductions dramatically reduce the stresses on the levees. Historically, many levee failures have not occurred due to overtopping, but due to piping and undermining due to the strains from the pressure of the water in the channel. So similar to a water tower, the taller a column of water, the greater the pressure. And lowering the river stage during the flood reduces this pressure and extends the effectiveness of the levee protection, thus dramatically reducing the flood risk during individual events and over time. Next slide, please. And as has already been mentioned, California already has one of the most variable climates in the United States. And climate change forecasts indicate periods of wet and dry extremes will potentially increase in magnitude and frequency. Essentially, the wet periods will be getting wetter and the dry periods will be getting drier. Additionally, overall temperatures are likely to become warmer, allowing for more precipitation to fall as rain versus snow, especially in flood events. And rain and warm winds at higher elevations during future atmospheric rivers may contribute to additional melting of snowpacks, further increasing flood potential. By using the latest technology and forecasting, the Arc Spillway would be able to release water days ahead of these large events, thus minimizing the impacts to downstream communities. The spillway will act as a climate resiliency tool that when coupled with FIRO can help mitigate the impacts of future large flood events. Next slide, please. The FCO program, regional partnerships and coordinator operations between Yuba Water Agency and our federal and state partners have provided substantial benefits. In the future, combined and coordinated FIRO operations of Orobo and New Bullard Bar will allow for the optimal use of this innovative water management strategy. And the related efforts, <clears throat> including the updates to the water control manuals and the planned ARC spillway, all act to enhance and improve flood risk reduction in our region. Next slide. So in summary, Yuba County is on track to be one of the best protected regions in the Central Valley. Uh, the maintenance of New Bullard's Bar Dam is critical to public safety, along with investments in levee improvements, long-term planning, and partnerships. And finally, our ARC spillway would be one of our most significant investments in public safety and climate resilience since the construction of New Bullard's Bar Dam and the Yuba River Development Project. All right. Wonderful. Uh, so that concludes our lunch and learn. Uh, we're going to take some questions now. Uh, for those who are interested, you can follow us on social media at Yuba Water. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. You can also visit yubawater.org to subscribe to future webinars and news. Uh, and you can also scan the QR code on the screen uh, right here if you'd like to subscribe to future webinars. And again, we'll be sure to send out a recording of this webinar. Uh, so we'll go ahead and move on to questions. Uh, we have a couple in the queue already. Uh, previously in the webinar, folks had asked if there will be a, the slides will be available, and we can definitely send the slides out. Uh, we had a question about the Goldfields levy and whether uh, and what agency will be in charge. And Ryan, it looks like you took that one. That's RD seven eighty four. We'll assume ownership and maintenance of the Goldfields levy. So a few additional questions coming in. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and switch the screen so we can see our panelists. So you all can take these questions. All right. Ryan and John, if you wanted to turn on your uh, videos, we can go ahead and take some of these questions. Okay, so we've got, uh, are there any plans to get infrastructure dollars for improvements? That may be the uh, recent uh, infrastructure act that was passed. Ryan, did you have a response for that one? Uh, yeah, I don't know, John, if you want me to take that or because we're both, John and I are really working together with our team internally to go after that, that um, several funding sources. Um, but uh, we're really focusing on developing, part, developing partnerships with um, state and federal agencies to, um, I guess leverage resources and and really develop a way to to fund the, the especially the arc spillway. Um, so it, a short answer is yes, we're definitely going after those infrastructure funds. John, I don't know if you had anything to add to that. Right. 
Are you there, John? Oh yeah, sorry, I had nothing further to add, thanks. Oh, sure, okay. So yes, the short answer is yes, there are plans to get the infrastructure dollars for improvements. And it looks like we also had a question about the videos being helpful. Thank you to our uh, communications team, Dee Dee, I know you're probably on the line for leading that effort. Uh, yes, these videos are all available on our website. Uh, you can find them under our flood risk reduction section under the programs and projects. They're also on our Vimeo and yes, YouTube. Uh, the Phil Brozek asked, can you discuss the timeline of the new spillway? John, did you want to take that one? Sure. So we're currently in the design and permitting phase. Um, and we expect probably by sometime next year to have a 100% design completed. And there has been no timeline in terms of the construction for the project yet. I think, you know, we're looking at it being probably a three to four year construction timeline, but no date has been set as of yet. And it looks like um, Alan Cabrera asked, given the drought situation in California, is it relevant to consider flood hazards? We love this question. Ryan or John, did you want to chime in on uh, why it's important to consider uh, flood hazards during times of drought? Yeah, I'd be happy to at least give my perspective on it. I, I think it's always relevant to uh, consider flood hazards. And, and I think just going back a few years, if we look at, you know, we, we had a pretty extensive drought, you know, 2013, 14, and 15. And, you know, we, I guess you could have asked the same question then. And then what we saw in 2017 was a, kind of a banner year for precipitation. And we all remember it from the Oroville incident and um, some damages we, we, we actually incurred locally through high water. So, yeah, I think the answer is always relevant to consider flood hazards because, it, you know, things can change. And, you know, we had this um, atmospheric river, you know, present itself, what, three weeks ago now. And those you know, the potential is those can keep coming. And, and especially if we, you know, develop a pretty good snowpack and things can always change really, you know, really quickly. Although there is quite a bit of a, a buffer in the reservoirs right now. It's something we always want to keep our eye on. And I, John, I don't know if you wanted to add anything from a, a meteorological perspective or. Yeah, I, I mean, I could just add that, you know, I think that's exactly it is that we're looking at these periods of variations um, becoming more and more pronounced, you know, again, the drier periods becoming drier and the wet becoming wetter. So I think the, you know, the opportunity when it is dry is actually a perfect time to focus on some of these efforts because you have the time, um, you know, to look into some of these programs and projects with the understanding that, um, you know, there's always going to be the, the new phrase, I think is precipitation whiplash, right? We're going to turn back the other way. So. Thank you. Tim, anything that you wanted to add on, on preparing for floods, even during times of drought? Yeah, no, I, I think uh, Ryan and John did uh, uh, all the highlights, so. Okay, and great. Uh, Tim, this, this one might, might be for you. Uh, what is Oroville doing to provide the same protection on the Feather River as well as the Yuba? Uh, or Ryan, I know that the Department of Water Resources manages uh, Oroville, so that's probably more appropriate for them. But uh, Tim or Ryan, anything that you wanted to speak to there? Well, I, I know that the, uh, you know, I can't speak to exactly what they're doing specifically, but Oroville is also part of the uh, FCO or the forecast coordinated operations right now. So you know, we constantly uh, coordinate with them and talk with them and regarding our releases and our operations. To ensure that we don't both you know, try really release at the same time and flood the downstream communities. Um, so they're very uh, active in that uh, as well as us. As, as far as other specifics, I don't know. I don't have any information. I don't know if John does or not. Yeah, I just say, you know, again, they're, they're our partner in the FURO program, the Uba Feather FURO program, um, you know, and also went through a comprehensive needs assessment, you know, following the 2017 incident. Okay, great. Any, anything else to add? So feeling confident about uh, Department of Water Resources Management of Oroville. Okay, so we've also got um, a request. Can Yuba Water and Scripps launch a weather balloon at Yes Charter Academy since we are studying water in our sixth grade science? We can definitely follow up with you uh, on that, Mr. Cabrera. Uh, thank you for the, the thought. Or um, yeah, we can definitely follow up on that. So thanks for, for reaching out. Great presentation. Understand you're focused on in a large spillway. 
Was there a consideration of a tunnel to provide similar protection? And how did you decide on the spillway design? So um, the, the new spillway is not really a spillway enlargement. It's the addition of a, a second spillway uh, to the downstream left of the uh, current spillway. Uh, so, and we did go through a couple of design reviews. Uh, one of the first uh, designs was a tunnel version uh, where we were spilling uh, the, the water through a tunnel. Um, but there were you know, design challenges with that. Uh, there were engineering challenges with that design and concerns from, from us in terms of operations and various aspects. Um, so we went back into the, the drawing board, looked at the design again, and came back with this uh, open channel design. Very, almost the same thing as our current spillway because you know, we're very comfortable with it. We know it works. Uh, it's, it's, it's used widely in, in the industry. Um, so it's, and it's uh, also turned out to be a little bit uh, cheaper uh, in the long run to build. So the current design is uh, based on um, current operations. But we'd also did it consider other designs as well, including that tunnel. Great, John, uh, anything to add on the design of the spillway? Nope, <clears throat> Tim got it. Great, uh, looks like we've got a few more questions. Uh, another question about the presentation. Yes, we will send the presentation and the recording out within the next 48 hours. And uh, we, got a, we have a question uh, from Annie Vasquez about how many times has the water reached higher than normal? That may be a relationship to New Bullard's Bar, and how will the second spillway eliminate that critical situation? So how many times has the water reached higher than normal, I suspect, at New Bullard's Bar Dam? And how will the spillway eliminate that critical situation or potentially help um, eliminate high water at New Bullard's Bar? I, I can take a stab at that, and I think, um... You know, maybe a way to look at it is how often do we envision using the second spillway to reduce downstream flows? And I think, you know, on average, you know, we've done a lot of modeling um, and looked at historical and potential future events and scaling. And I think, you know, in general, we just say we'd expect to use it, you know, again, every maybe once every 10 years or so. Again, that can be, you know, variable based on how storm events come in. But on average, I think that is about how we anticipate using the spillway or the frequency of using the second spillway in the future. And again, by using the spillway, we're looking at reducing the downstream water levels more so than the levels in New Bullard's Bar. Great, and it looks like we've got a sixth grade class present. So we've got a few more questions uh, from our sixth graders online. One of them is, why did they build the, the dam? And I think we talked about that earlier in the presentation. Tim, if you wanted to take that one again for Celia. Cecilia, why did they build New Village Bar Dam? Yeah, the, uh, really the primary purpose of why we built the dam was for flood risk uh, reduction to uh, you know, help uh, protect the uh, communities the downstream of the dam, including Marysville, Yuba City. And, uh, uh, but the dam also provides many other secondary benefits as well. Uh, it, we, uh, helps, it helps provide a, a resource for electrical generation um, where we uh, get the money to help operate and, and invest in our communities. It helps, we also help protect fish. Provide, the reservoir upstream of the dam provides lots of recreation opportunities around the dam. We have lots of campgrounds that are open to the public. Um, and we also provide a, a consistent water source for uh, the irrigators uh, and communities of Cuba uh, County as well. So primary purpose really was flood protection, but there are, the dam also provides many other uh, secondary benefits as well. Tim, we have another question from one of our sixth graders. Uh, what animal species are present around the dam? Any insight on some of the animals or fish around Bullards? Yeah, so I mean, in the reservoir, there were lots of the different uh, kinds of fish in the reservoir. And in fact, just a few years ago, the world record spotted bass uh, was caught in New Bulls Bar Reservoir. Um, as far as it says in the dam, I'm assuming you mean around the dam. <laughs> there are no animals in the dam. Um, around the dam on the downstream side, it, it, as you can see from my background picture, there's lots of 
vegetation and trees. So we get a variety of animals uh, hanging around there. I've seen bears. So that's uh, walking around at the base of the dam. So we have to be careful of that. Rattlesnakes, deers. Um, so this typical animal you would see up here in Dobbins. Awesome. So just a few more questions. We've got about five left. Someone asked if we if we pursue uh, state, federal, local grants for any of these projects. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. Um, you know what, what we're doing right now is is actually we're we're you know working with FEMA and Cal OES. We're pursuing um, we were pursuing a BRIC grant, but that was not. It just turned out it wasn't going to be a good fit for us right now. But we are gearing up to to. Uh, apply for an HMGP grant, which is a hazard mitigation grant. Right, and then uh, we also had a question, if the revenue generated at Colgate is used to support the agencies who maintain levies? Absolutely, that's, I think that's a big, one of the biggest things that, um, one of our biggest focuses at the, at the Yuba Water Agency is, it's, it's we do a lot of um, support for our neighboring reclamation districts, as well as our member units. and. Um, with the, with the reclamation districts, a lot of the capital improvement projects are funded by Yuba Water, and and really we put the focus on using those funds to leverage other grant funds. So we we try to be the seed money wherever we can to to uh, apply for you know state or federal grants. And it it's been I mean from everything, you know the projects we talked about this morning, it's been a tremendous success, and we're going to continue to do that. That's our charge. Great. And it looks like um, Charter Academy is getting ready to sign off. And the last question that they had, John, maybe you can take this one, is the cause of rain and how it affects our environment. You want to give a quick crash course on rain, where it comes from? Yeah, so this is uh, an example of the water cycle as, uh, you know, the water evaporates and then, um, you know, falls to the ground as it comes off the ocean and then runs back down the rivers and back to the ocean and repeats. And so, that process is, you know, as old as time and, you know, our agency, um, you know, has these great resources that really, um, you know, benefit from that cycle. So. Wonderful. Okay, the last two questions. Um, this, this one also might be for you, John. Will the water level change on the arc spillway affect electricity generation at the dam? So will water level changes with the arc spillway affect um, hydropower generation? Yeah, so the times that the arc spillway would be used would be during times we'd be spilling water uh, anyway, and so, um, or have the capacity to spill water. And so there'll be little to, you know, no impact to electrical generation with the spillway. Great. And our final question, it looks like, and then we'll wrap up. What are the impacts um, of aging infrastructure and how are we dealing with them? Uh, Tim, not sure if you've got some insight on um, dam maintenance and how we generally handle aging infrastructure. No, that, that is an excellent question. And I, I get that a lot. Um, New Boys Bar Dam, like many other dams built uh, around that same area, is uh, getting up there in age. He's 50 plus years old. Uh, and aging, aging infrastructure is definitely a concern for uh, most owners around the country. Most dams are uh, 50 plus years old. Um, I, I like to uh, use the analogy of, of a car, you know, so uh, when you buy and own a car, um, you, there's maintenance you need to do in the car to ensure that it, it continues running. And if you maintain a car well, uh, you, it can run for a very long time. You know, there are many examples of you know, people driving over a million miles on, the, on their car because they do their, uh, their routine maintenance uh, on the vehicle. Uh, similar to the dam, you know, we the dam is a uh, it's a, a moving structure. But believe it or not, you know, it looks like it's a very very big hunky piece of uh, concrete that sits there. But there are lots of uh, internal things that are going on, and it's uh, that we have to monitor to ensure that the dam is continuing stable. And things do deteriorate uh, in the dam, so we have to go in there and do periodic maintenance. Um, one of the things that we did recently was a grouting project to seal up the foundation the, at, the, at the base of the dam to reduce the amount of seepage. Uh, we're currently undergoing a, a maintenance project right now to reduce some of the pressure uh, from underneath the foundation as well. 
So it's a continuing the continuation of maintenance that we have to to do and a continuation of monitoring, which is why you know it's one of my goals is to really upgrade all of instrumentation to modern 21st century standard uh, to ensure that we have comprehensive coverage uh, of of the monitoring and safety issues inside the dam and really to try to tackle those uh, maintenance issues and, and make it more preventative maintenance instead of a, you know corrective maintenance where something goes wrong, they have to fix it. Um, so it's just, uh, again, it's a continuing work and you, like a car, you have, you have to continue to monitor and uh, conduct periodic maintenance on various parts of the dam. Wonderful. That was our final question. Uh, so thank you so much to all of our participants for coming today and John and Ryan and Tim. Always a pleasure having you all speak about flood risk reduction and dam safety. So uh, with that, we will send out a recording of this webinar and uh, a copy of the slides for those who asked. And we will see you at our next Lunch and Learn. Head over to yubawater.org to sign up for future alerts and hope everyone has a wonderful rest of your day and happy early Thanksgiving to all. Thanks everyone.